Hello and welcome to our parent workshop on developing a growth mindset. I am Claire Waller and I'm the head of primary at Nexus International School Malaysia. So the aims of the workshop today is to understand what growth mindset is and to explore how supporting your child to develop a growth mindset will improve academic success and happiness in life. And we will also discuss what a growth mindset looks like at school at Nexus and what it could look like at home. So, starting off with a bit of a warm up activity for the parents here. If I show you these pictures and ask you to talk about what areas you feel confident with, what would you say? If you've got a partner with you, you can talk it through. Otherwise, just have a think. What would be the first phrase that came to your head if I asked you how confident you are at telling jokes or at drawing self-portraits? What, what would you say? We'll revisit this a little bit later when we explore your own type of mindset. So what does growth mindset mean? It actually means the belief that you can control your own ability and you can learn and improve if you want to. It just depends on, on practice and how much work you will put into anything. Carol Dweck has, has written a few books around the topic of growth mindset. And she says, if parents want to give their children a gift, the best thing they can do is teach their children to love challenges, be intrigued by mistakes, enjoy effort and keep on learning. So learn through your mistakes. So there are two different types of mindsets. There's a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. And most people, I would imagine, wouldn't fall 100% into one category or the other. It will depend on the situation. But you may think about yourself and you may think about your child and identify areas where they really struggle to make progress because of having a fixed mindset. So if you've got a growth mindset, you really, you feel that you do have the, the ability to learn anything, but it may may be more challenging, you may have to put a lot of work in. You're not afraid of making mistakes because you learn through failures. And you, you really welcome feedback, you really want to improve. You're not afraid of, of somebody giving you advice on how you can get even better. A fixed mindset believes that you are naturally very good at something or naturally not good at something. So you may as well just give up. There's no point even trying. They get frustrated easily if something goes wrong and that's it, they, they'll give up. They won't even try. So you can have a look at these phrases here and just spend a moment deciding would that be something that's to do with a fixed mindset set or with a growth mindset. So if you just think about the, the type of language you used when I showed those pictures of those unusual circumstances at the beginning, like telling a joke or parallel parking, what did you say? How did you describe your abilities? Did you say things like, oh, I'm terrible at that. Oh, I can never do that. Because that would be a fixed mindset. I know I tricked you a little bit into that one. So the type of language that we're looking for with a, a growth mindset is somebody talk about, okay, this didn't work. That's okay. Let's try plan B. What am I missing with this maths problem? What am I missing? Why can't I get it? What, what, what can I do to improve? What strategies can I use now to help me? With a fixed mindset, look for phrases that your child might use where they really compare themselves to other people. Oh, I'll never be as good as them. So there's no point even even starting, oh, she's so smart. Oh, she, she is a mathematician, I'm not. And these are the types of phrases that we, we want to try and avoid because we don't want our children to, to give up. 
So why is it important to develop a growth mindset and to really encourage this with your child? Well, if your child doesn't give up when things go wrong, they really will succeed. And whether they they are an extremely able child, let's say they 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 with maths problems, love their maths problems, they always want more challenge, they always want to improve, then they will continue to really improve. There is no ceiling, there is no level for just saying, right, they are they are top, they are so successful, they can't get any better. They will continue to challenge themselves. They will always want to be the best they possibly can be. And they'll try even harder in the face of setbacks. They will be resilient and they will be so much more successful than somebody with a fixed mindset in life as well. It's a it's a such a valuable lifelong skill. So where does our a growth mindset start? Well, with our children, it really we they really look at their parents and they get a lot from their parents from the things their parents say and the things their parents do so if we're really really honest and think of an example of at home where maybe we didn't model a growth mindset so and it, there's just a typical example there, the, the remote controls oh i don't know how the remote controls work ask your dad or ask your mum or ask your brother Oh, I just can't do um, something on, on the, the laptop with technology. Get somebody else to do it. So what can be really good is just taking the time, whether it's doing a jigsaw or, or some, some problem that you're having at work, just to, to model, okay, this is something I find really hard, but do you know what? I am going to work out how to do it because it can't be that hard. It might take me a bit of time. But if if a parent throws the remote control on the sofa and says, I can't work this out, then that's sending a really strong message to your child. So really vocalize the fact that, okay, I'm finding this challenge, but I will work out how to do it. Again, if there are things that you do for your child, particularly for younger children, it sometimes can be frustrating watching them put the socks on or really struggle to get dressed and they keep doing it wrong. But until you allow them to have a go and do it on their own with maybe a little bit of guidance instead of doing it for them, it may take time, but in the long run, it will save you a lot of time. So we really need to encourage our children, have a go, do that for yourself. So encouraging a growth mindset doesn't mean just praising the effort. It doesn't mean just praising everything they do. And sometimes as, as parents, because we all love our children so much and it's quite normal to give them a round of applause, you know, when, when they're a baby and they start walking and sometimes we can find ourselves, they'll draw a little bit of a, a picture on a piece of paper and pass it to you and if you're honest, you might not even look at it, but you're like, oh, that's wonderful. What a wonderful picture. And it might be a bit of a scribble and we really shouldn't do that. So because children know when we're being sincere, they, they know when we're being honest and we should give careful feedback to our children. So let's say particularly at the moment, they, they might be showing you some work that they're doing at home and we don't want to be too harsh because we want to build their confidence but let's say they've done some artwork or, or i've got the example here of swimming they're showing you their their swimming so rather than just saying everything's wonderful that's wonderful be very specific in your praise what is it that's wonderful about it so let's say they're practicing the crawl you can see they've really worked on their strong legs and they're kicking with their crawl stroke and that's really clearly giving them a lot of power it's making them fast so what could what could we do to get even better now? What is your next step with your swimming? Okay, with a crawl, maybe it's keeping your fingers together um, to give you more, more power, power in your arms. So really careful feedback to your child will help them have that attitude of improving. So how do we encourage a growth mindset at school at Nexus? There are many things that, that we do. Um, 
um, we talk about learning through our mistakes. Teachers will deliberately make little mistakes and, and then pick up on it and, and identify how they've improved. And when we talk about feedback with learning, if we look at these examples of feedback here, we could just say, good job, great job, good, 90%, B. But what does that actually mean? Because it, it would still be a bit of a mystery for the child as to what they had done really well and what they could do to get even better because we can all improve however good we are at something. So when we give feedback as teachers, we need to be very specific. What is it they've done well? Okay, well done. You've used very descriptive language here. That's fantastic. So what can we do to get even better? You, you're ready now to start to vary your sentence structures to make your writing really interesting. And I've got an example here of, of conferencing, of uh, Miss Shamala in year six doing some one-to-one -one learner conferencing, which is, is a very valuable thing to do. And this is linked to, to writing. The advice here actually belongs to another child. I just picked a different example. But the, the teacher sits with the child and, and talks through their learning. What, what was it they were really pleased about based on our success criteria? Because we give very clear success criteria of what we'd like the children to include, for example, in their piece of writing. And then has a conversation, but what parts did you find challenging? So they've been quite open here and, and they've talked about their struggle to really develop ideas further into longer paragraphs. So that's great. So they've identified where they need to improve and had the conversation with the teacher. Okay, what could help you with this? What can I do as a teacher to support you? And it's a really positive conversation and these conferences, these small group conferences continued with the, the continuation of learning online as well to really unpick the each piece of work. It is very time consuming so you can't do it all of the time every day because you're having to teach the rest of the class but even a short session can really really improve learning and build that growth mindset. So Think about how you do give feedback to your child when they show you something. Obviously, they're your child and you love them to bits, so you want to really boost their confidence, but you want it to be sincere as well. We're not just going to say that we everything is, is wonderful. So we can find that the positive and really encourage that conversation about next steps. Um, I mentioned in, in the last workshop I did about building a positive mindset with children, was um, it's really great to have those conversations around the dinner table as well. What did you find challenging today? What, what, and what did you overcome? And really celebrate those setbacks and how your child has overcome those, those setbacks. Um, I've just put a link to a video. If you Google Austin's Butterfly YouTube video, this, it's a bit of an old video, but it's a really nice example of in school, giving feedback to children, giving really specific, meaningful feedback on, on how to improve. If you've got any questions at all about developing a growth mindset with your children, please just email me and, and hopefully you've got a little idea to take away. Thank you.